Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game Digital video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. Sorry for a little bit of background noise with fans. It's absolutely roasting here in the UK, which is another reason I've got the uh, computer off in the background there, because otherwise you'd probably see me literally melting on screen. But we're going to do our best to uh, remove all of the uh, audio uh, noise, of course, in post-production. So just sorry about that if you can hear something. Anyway, we're going to be starting things out with Intel. Specifically, ASRock have confirmed that eight cores will indeed work on the H310 motherboards. So this confirmation actually comes from stickers on the motherboard boxes of the H310s from ASRock. This is very interesting because it means that even the lowest end motherboards will retain uh, compatibility with eight core processors. So that means that the 9700 and 9900s will indeed work on these boards, which is kind of bizarre. I mean, why you'd want to use such a high-end processor on such a low-end board is a bit of a mystery, but still it's nice to know that that compatibility is there. Of course, you might need to do a BIOS update before you put one of these processes in, or you might just well have a blank screen when you boot. Uh, it's also going to be kind of interesting to me in terms of is there going to be some motherboards that simply just can't handle this, uh, whether we're referring to voltages or whatever, are there VRMs going to be capable? Of course, all of that depends on the voltage and power requirements of these new processes. But still, I am really happy that we will see support from this because ultimately it does mean, of course, that these processes can reach a larger audience. I'm not too surprised that this is the case, after all, from what we've heard regarding the Z390 and Z370 being pretty much the same chipset, it does make sense that lower-end motherboard SKUs that do support this. In a negative piece of Intel news though, Intel will not be however replacing the 14nm process until holiday 2019 and this is actually confirmed by the company themselves in the Q2 2018 earnings call and they've said that the first products based on 10m process will arrive by holiday 2019. To put that into some level of perspective, we're going to be of course seeing a refresh of the uh, Coffee Lake architecture which is going to be known as the ninth generation. We're also seeing, of course, Whiskey Lake as well. This will be the fifth iteration of the node. We've seen Sky Lake, Cable Lake, Broadwell, Coffee Lake, and Whiskey Lake. Of course, there have been improvements there. We've seen 14NM, 14NM+, 14NM++, and so on and so on. But still, Intel have been stuck on this node for some time. From what we understand, AMD will be launching Epic on the 7NM process quite early next year. And for the AM4 platform, it has been confirmed that the next generation of Ryzen processors will launch after Epic, which is a bit of a switcheroo for AMD, but at least in theory, they will have 7NM uh, processors out prior to Intel's 10NM. Of course, you can't necessarily do like for like comparisons to say, well, it's 7NM versus 10NM, 7NM equal better, because, well, processes and stuff like that don't work. They're different between different manufacturing companies and so on and so on and so on. But still, from a PR standpoint, it's not good for Intel, and that's putting it mildly. From what Lisa Sue has said, and I covered this yesterday, the company are also right now looking into 5NM, and uh, Lisa Sue thinks it's a pretty good investment. And with the company also having a 26% boost in its uh, R&D budgets, It'll be very interesting to see what AMD are able to pull out of its hat over the next couple of years. And with that said, I do think that when Intel do get the 10NM node right, it's going to be super duper aggressive. I mean, we can already see what's happening with the eight core uh, coffee lakes. From what we're understanding, they can go up to five gigahertz from a couple of, for just a couple of cores. But still, even if you say that 4.7 gigahertz to overclock, so let's say 5.2 to 5.5 gigahertz, that's a bloody impressive processor. Yes, it will most likely be more expensive than the 2700X for sake of argument, but still, for folks who do want that level of performance, AMD and Intel will be uh, battling it out in that arena. Now let's move over to a slew of rumors concerning the GTX 11 slash GTX 20 series. As the supposed launch date of the GTX 11 series gets closer and closer and closer, we are of course seeing a lot more rumors concerning the upcoming graphics cards. So let's discuss the latest ones, and these come to us from the website WCCF Tech. Uh, I'm going to read out the rumors first, and then we'll analyze them. So there are actually different power bands that we're going to be seeing 
these graphics cards operate in three different power brackets they are 120 150 and 180 watts but what's rather interesting about this as well is the naming conventions will not be like the uh, GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 and GTX 1080 Ti. Instead, we will also be seeing names such as the 75 and the and the 85 cards in, uh, in their place. So, for example, the 120 watt card could have a suffix of 60, 65, and 70. The 150 what cards might have 70, 75, and 80. And finally, the 80 cards could have 80, 85, and 90. According to their leaks, the 120 watt cards could cost 500 US dollars, the 150 watt cards could cost $600, and then the 180 watt cards could cost anything from 700 to 749 US dollars. But, crucially, the GTX 1080 and the 1080 tie will also drop in price. So the ties will drop in price by 100 bucks, and the GTX 1080 will drop in price by $50. We will also see the three different uh, configurations of memory. There will be two configurations which have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, while the flagship has 11 gigabytes of VRAM. So this means, at least if this room is accurate, we'll see a bus width of 352 bits. Don't forget that the board we saw in that PCB engineering sample was 384 bits. So whether this was a derivative of that, perhaps even a higher end SKU, whether that had absolutely nothing to do with it and it was like a quadro card or just an engineering card, or whether the specifications that WCCF have got are incorrect, we just don't know yet. I'm going to continue with the rumors just for a moment before I give my analysis on this though. Um, so the release schedule for these cards, 120 watt cards will arrive at the end of September. We're going to see the 150 watt cards hit in the second week of September. And finally, the next generation 180 watt cards will launch in the first week of September. These dates are not the same dates that we heard previously. Previously, we heard that the cards were going to start launching in August, and then we were going to see another car, another couple of cards hit the month after that. And then after that, we were going to see the final set of cards, which was going to be the GTX 1160. So obviously, the release date's right there there is something hinky. There's either like the first set of rumors were incorrect or WCCF's rumors are incorrect. Finally, according to their sources, uh, if you want to believe the rumors, we also hear that the Pascal lineup of cards, as you can probably predict this given the price cards, are not going anywhere. In fact, these cards which are going to be introduced, the 11 series or the 20 series or whatever the heck they're going to be called series, they are actually going to be the operating almost like the high-end cards from in uh, NVIDIA. You can almost think of them as like multiple derivatives of Titan, or you could also think of them, of them as like the HEDT segment from, let's say, uh, Intel or AMD. In other words, they are there for the for the really high-end gamers. They are there for people who want that really high level of performance, and these cards are going to be priced as such. And accordingly, the actual manufacturing cost of these cards is also going to be really high as well. So do I think these rumors are true? Honestly, I don't really have that much faith in these rumors. That's just my personal opinion. I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, I'm going to be really interested to see exactly what comes of it, like how NVIDIA are even going to segment the lineup, because that's just really confusing to me. If you have like the 1080 Ti, for example, which we can presume will be slower than the, what, the 1160? I mean, how is that even going to work in terms of different SKUs? Will they have the 1160, 1165? Like, how, how will the SKUs kind of work together? It's possible that we just don't have the entire picture. So when we know everything, the rumors make a great deal more sense. That might be the way that things are going to shake up. Ultimately, though, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see Pascal, the 10 series, hang around for a little bit after the 11 series launches, whether these rumors are accurate or inaccurate. Why? Because... They probably just want to cut the price, get rid of all the cards they can, and it makes sense. This has happened with Kepler, this has happened with Maxwell, it just happens all the time. You see the retailers cut the price as much as possible, and there you go. One final piece of news before I wrap up the video though, that is for owners who are looking to upgrade to the next generation Threadrippers, aka Threadripper 2. And the good news is that if you own the first generation X399 motherboard, many motherboard vendors currently have available the 
BIOS update for your particular motherboard. Just be aware that you probably do want to upgrade your uh, motherboard BIOS before you plonk in the new processor, or in some instances you won't be able to up, you know, update the BIOS unless you can update your BIOS without the CPU being in and blah 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 blah. But still, it is quite nice that these motherboard vendors have actually released the BIOSes already. So do of course check your manufacturer's website and check to see what they're saying in terms of like the um, the status of the BIOS, whether it's beta and early access or you know how stable it is and all that type of thing. But of course they're probably going to release new BIOSes as these processes are getting closer and closer to release anyway. But still I just wanted to, to put this out there because I know some people are considering an upgrade to for example the 2990X and honestly it is looking rather beastly. But for folks who haven't yet jumped onto the Threadripper platform, you would be much better served to just go with the second generation X399 motherboard, despite the fact that yes, in theory, you probably won't lose too much. There are some murmurs that the second generation boards will overclock better, but ultimately we do not know that until the motherboards are actually in reviewers' hands, and of course your hands as well, because ultimately your experiences are just as important as reviewers. We might get really lucky with the samples we've got, or we might just get really unlucky. It's sometimes possible that we just get really sucky samples, and vice versa, it's also sometimes that we get the best samples. A larger set of samples is always the way to go. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.